this up for you. Um, so, one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and spoke with me, saying, Come here, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. So, he's a harlot, you know that. It is a um, <coughs> great harlot, means who commit um, adultery, you know, it's like a prostitute or like that, sits on many waters, means uh, many nations here, multitudes, many people, many nations, you know, with whom the kings of the earth committed acts of immorality. And those who dwell on earth were made drunk with the wine of her immorality. You know, here, um, this uh, uh, picture of this gay, great harlot is, is the picture of a city. So here, adultery means, uh, uh, God always speaks idolatry as the as spiritual adultery, you know. So anything that uh, exalt more than God is like a God called that as a adultery. So um, idolatry is uh, adultery, idolatry, idols, right? Worshipping anything more than God. So um, so that my is this picture of here city, that city and uh, kings of the earth means all the rulers of uh, nations, uh, they committed immorality. It means uh, they are in love with that city, like uh, what all in uh, they love materialism, you know, they love, but this city is, uh, um, uh, is uh, something with uh, um, connect with uh, uh, religion, you know, so um, yeah, that's why it's a sexual immorality, it says he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on scarlet beast full of blasphemous names, having seven heads and ten horns. So again, he's a, here there is a picture of women sitting on the a beast here. And that beast uh, having, uh, you know, remember this beast? We already discussed about this beast in the uh, previous chapters. This beast is in nothing but an antichrist and having a uh, so seven... Uh, heads and the ten horns and the seven heads represent seven uh, seven rulers uh, uh, seven kingdoms seven kings and seven rule kingdoms you know and um, uh, so uh, ten horns uh, represent uh, like a more strength and power of the beast right so maybe later on those uh, ten um, uh, nations will come under the antichrist rule Okay, so that's all. So again, it's represent about a woman here. Now remember that in chapter 12, Revelation chapter 12, uh, you, you saw that uh, women, Israel, that uh, women represent Israel and giving birth to a male child. So devil is also counterfeits everything here. So they here, uh, these women here represent a city, you know, or a country. So, um, and names, uh, uh, here names blasphemies. It's all uh, against God. Everything, what she does, the, whatever the things that happen, it is all against God. So, and uh, against the truth. So that's a blasphemous names, uh, having seven heads and 10 horns, okay? The woman was clothed in purple and scarlet, adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand gold cup full of abominations and of the unclean things of her immorality. Maybe this city is known for so much of wealth. That's why all the precious stones mentioned. A lot of businesses maybe, very rich maybe, rich city. And her forehead name was written that a mystery. What is that name? Babylon. So that city name is Babylon. The Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. So is a mother of harlots means uh, this Babylon city is so known for uh, religion. 
ancient religion you know like um, that influenced uh, the whole world uh, like it is that religion um, is how old that religion is is it was there before christianity actually so and that uh, uh, that's why it's called mother mother of harlots you know and idolatry okay so paganism lot of idol worship comes from that city only and that influences the whole world now today okay and above abominations of the earth. why earth committed that kind of paganism today why earth is filled with idol worship today it is uh, all because it is originated from there that that religion is originated from babylon so i want to speak little bit history about babylon religion okay so um uh, there is um, you know uh, a king called nimrod nimrod actually it was uh, founded this religion was founded by the wife of nimrod and uh, who is the nimrod nimrod is a great grandson of uh, nova that time you know from like a babel uh, tower from that time onwards that religion was there okay so this nimrod is great grandson of nova his wife name is semiramis semiramis so actually people say that she is the like a high priest of uh, uh, for that uh, religion that idol worship she was the high priest it seems and she uh, got a son named tamuz tamuz and uh, and now the the, the tamuz it says that he was one day he was killed by a wild animal you know wild animal but miraculously he come back to life and uh, that's why they all worship tamus and uh, that tamus only canonite named that uh, uh, tamus as a baal so that's what we call baal worship you know in ca in canon so famous baal worship and even um uh, this bible mention lot of times uh, about this uh, uh, baal worship about the worship of tamus you know and uh, uh, ezekiel ezekiel chapter 8 verse 14 and uh, because ezekiel was uh, protesting against the worship of tamus worship of, uh, like uh, uh, they were they were having something uh, a weeping for tamus you know like a weeping of uh, the ceremony they do some ceremony of weeping for tamus you know so that so it was that time in the old testament also many times the prophets uh, came against that kind of worship it was there that time okay so this that is why it it says here mystery mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and so that is even this religion this babylonian religion actually even uh, it is supports catholicism also that time you know after uh, jesus came uh, sorry uh, this early church believers came and spread the gospel everywhere so when the rome in the rome also a uh, gospel was preached in rome and many became christians that time so before they become christians they were doing this actually uh, this uh, worship of this um, uh, babylon religion were this they worship that women and that uh, the sun tamus they worship that statue that woman statue and holding a baby in the hand that is baby they call the tamus okay so they were worshiping that so when the gospel was preached many turned to jesus christ and they started worshiping jesus and you know there, there was so much uh, happened that time in the, this roman roman government you know what they started deceiving people they started forcing people to worship that statue continue to worship that religion only so that but they deceived them saying that you know this this women statue is the mary 
And that's what I heard people telling that. That's how, you know, this woman statue is the, the Mary and that baby in the hand, that is Jesus, you know. So people started believing and they, they continue that same idol worship. Even they brought that into the temples, into the buildings, in the church buildings now. You know, those statue worship, they started continue same thing. So they... So they didn't have to change much of the religion, even when they become Christians, you know. So that's how it became so, like a, this Babylonian religion became so popular everywhere. It entered into everything, you know. So um, it's one day in the end time, this is going to be a universal. This religion been accepted by the whole world one day. Even Antichrist will start practice this religion, you know. And people say that, you know, even uh, in, we don't know which one, which pope, we don't know. But people, I heard a lot of people talk about like this, you know, because he accepts all religions. You know, he speaks about loving everybody, loving every religion, you know, and so all religions start liking uh, Pope much uh, in the last days and they're all united, you know, it's all forming, they all become one and they're against true Christianity. So um, even uh, Buddhism, because Dalai Lama, and they also uh, come up with, you know, oh, he's also like Christ, uh, um, talk more about peace, you know. So like that, uh, uh, they all unite together. And finally, they so here Christian are they, that Buddhism, Dalai Lama, everything same, same. It means they talk about Catholic, you know, or oh, that this, everything, they mix up everything. Finally, they come up with one conclusion. All religions are good. We have to accept all religions. We have to accept all prayers now. So all unite together. And one thing they all come against is true Christianity. Okay. So, um, so that's, uh, okay. That's why it says here. And I saw... I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints. Did you see that? That's why I said that. They all come against a true Christianity. So they start persecuting. Who, who is going to start persecuting? We will see in, in shortly here. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the witnesses of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered greatly. And the angel said to me, why do you wonder? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and ten horns. Did you see that? This woman was sitting on the beast, okay? And the beast was carrying that woman. It means the beast follows Babylonian religion, okay? So in another way, you can say that that religion controls Antichrist. So it means that religion uh, helps Antichrist to rule, you know, dictates Antichrist how to rule, okay? Uh, <clears throat> uh, so the, uh, the beast that you saw, the beast that you saw was and is not and is about to come up out of the abyss and go to destruction. So that beast is about a person, is about a, some human being. So that's why, you know, a, a, a abyss and go to destruction means a son of perdition, uh, destruction. It mentioned, Jesus also mentioned about Judas, right? So like that, this one will go to destruction because when Jesus comes, he is going to destroy Antichrist. So he's talking, the beast here is to speaking about the Antichrist, okay? And he's saying that the, the beast that you saw was and is not and is about to come up out of abyss. So let's see that, that more explanation is given here. And those who dwell on the earth, whose name has not been written in the book of life, 
from the foundation of the world will wonder when they see the beast that he was and is not and will come. You know, everybody whose name is not written in the book of life is really going to follow him, admire him, okay? Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven governments, actually, seven kings and kingdoms, you know? So uh, the woman sits. It means all those kings and all those kingdoms were so much ruled by this religion. So they all follow that religion, only Babylonian religion, okay? Paganism, it means. And then, and they are seven kings, five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. When he comes, he must remain a little while. So this is about, you know, um, in the in John saw this vision, right? So for John, in the time of John, like he, that makes sense for him because there were five. There before there were <clears throat> there were seven kings. Rule. He was saying five have fallen. It means that time, you know, Babylon, Egypt, Egypt were ruling. Egypt were dominating that time. Egyptians. After that, Babylonians came. After that, um, uh, media Persian came. After that, you know, um, uh, media Persia, Greek came. So all those five kings came, world emperors, right? So they were all, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, uh, destroyed by Romans. So when Romans came, Roman took over, right? So that's five have fallen. One is, one is means John time, in the John time, Romans, Romans were ruling, okay? So Roman emperor was there in John time. And that's why one is means that present, present time of John, okay? And the other has not yet come. It means future, someone else who is going to come. And that one is going to overtake this Roman emperor, okay? So that other has not yet come. Okay. And when he comes, he must remain a little while. It means whoever right now ruling all mainly, that is a short time, the governments, whoever ruling right now, right? It's a short time, but he must remain a little while. But the eighth one is going to come. Okay. So the beast which was, which was and is not is himself also an eighth and is of the seven and he goes to destruction. So this means the beast which is going to come now in the day, in the future, that is going to be antichrist, that one be an eighth one. So this eighth ruler had all the characteristics of the seven rulers. So he, but he's more powerful and he's more stronger than all the seven, it means, all those seven were bad only. Nobody nobody is a good king. Everybody persecuted Christians only. Romans, how severely Christians were persecuted when Rome, Romans were ruling, right? But the eighth one is more, more than that. So, so but eighth one had all the characters of seven kings as well, okay? So, um, but he will go to destruction. Jesus will kill him, destroy him one day and send him to hell only. Now, that's, the 10 horns which you saw are 10 kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but they receive authority as kings with the beast for one hour. When Antichrist becomes ruler, he those 10 rulers, there's 10 kings, okay? They will receive more authority and power because of the Antichrist. Antichrist will give them the power and authority to rule 10 nations, okay? So, but is, it is just for one, not, not many years. You know, Antichrist rule is only, it mentioned just the seven years of ruling only, right? So these have one purpose and they give that power and authority to the beast. It means they subdue, they are submitted. They are submitted to 
antichrist okay so then um so we don't know people say that you know all those 10 10 rulers all european countries people say that so all those european countries come and submit to antichrist so antichrist must be coming from that side east you know people say there's there's so many things you know and let's uh, move on 14 these will wage war against the lamb and the lamb will overcome them because he is lord of lords king of kings and those who are with him are called the chosen and faithful okay so all this on everybody's against christ only so they wage war against christ but you know jesus is going to win them all right so and he said to me the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are people that's what i mentioned right the war sitting on the water means is a people multitude nations tongues you know so and so and the ten horns which you saw and the beast these will hate the harlot and will make her desolate and naked and will eat her flesh and will burn her up with fire for god has put it in their hearts to execute his purpose by having a common purpose and by giving their kingdom to the beast until the words of god will be fulfilled here you know what happens maybe at the middle of the antichrist reign you know maybe after three and a half years like that what happened all these rulers even including antichrist everybody hate that city that babylonian harlot you know why it means they are going to hate that religion so that's that's how god does things god put enmity between enemies and among them only so once they followed this religion then later on they themselves going to destroy this religion you know and uh, this babylonian city which is famous for religion and that is going to be destroyed by them only antichrist only so why it is going to happen like that because usually you know why people follow religion today they just use religion to become famous in the for the name of the religion they do a lot of things that is how they cover themselves behind the religion so that it they can they can do many things safely you know so and in the name of the religion they cover and under that religion they can do so many bad things people are not going to notice it you know so actually people use religion to do wrong for their benefit for their self to become famous they use religion so that's why once antichrist become famous then he is going to leave that religion and he will make all people to worship him because he wants to be a god so till he become popular till he is accepted by all nations in the world he only follows the religion once everybody is attracted to him start looking up to him that's the time he give up that religion he forces people to worship him you know so he wants to be a god he wants to sit as a god you know so that's the time even all these 10 rulers also it means 10 nation also they give up they give up that religion completely and they all worship a man one man okay so um then let's go to uh chapter 18 so that's how god destroyed that babel babylonian religion no? so but god he done his purpose you know god wants to god is destroying one after one one by one so now next thing comes later next it comes uh, at the end it comes antichrist so but before that god started destroying one by one so now the turn for religion 
So religion is going to be destroyed completely now. So the next thing, let's see, uh, chapter 18. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illum illumined with his glory. And he cried out with a mighty voice saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. And she has become a dwelling place of demons and a prison of every unclean spirit and a prison of every unclean and hateful bird. Here again, Babylon here. So this is a different from the first one. Okay. So that first Babylon city, that representing for religion. So this Babylon city is talking about uh, um, materialism, okay? Talking about uh, um, uh, commercial or, you know, uh, merchandise. So more businesses, uh, you know, wealth. So, that, so this city is known for that, like a rich, like a, so much of rich, uh, riches in the city. And, uh, and this city also, the angel is crying that fallen, fallen Babylon. It means God is destroying next that one, materialism. God targeted the materialism now, you know. So this uh, city is a place for demons, dwelling place for uh, demons and a prison like, a, like a, all kind of filth and all, um, you know, see wealth, how that city become richer because of all dishonest gain, all illegal businesses. So because of illegal businesses, they gained a lot of wealth. They became rich, you know. So for all the nations have drunk of the wine of the passion of her immorality and the kings of the earth have committed acts of immorality with her. And the merchants of earth have become rich by the wealth of her sensuality. So I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, so that you will not participate in her uh, sins and receive of her plagues. See how God wants to destroy that city now slowly with plagues. Many plagues are going to come, you know, and that's where God is warning people, come out of, come out of materialism. You don't take part in the materialism. So that's what happens in the last days. People more into money, money, more into gaining wealth. So, and for just to gain wealth, they start involve themselves into all wrong things to gain wealth, okay? So God is telling, come out of all of that so that because when I'm going to judge this city with plagues, you will not be destroyed along with them, you know? So that's why my people come out of materialism. So it is so important for us to take this warning, you know, we should not get into materialism too much, you know? So um, I heard another voice, um, for her sins piled up as high as heaven and God remembered their iniquities. So because the sins of that Babylon city is so high, it raised up like a Bab Babel tower. So God saw that iniquities and he came to judge that city. Okay. And then pay her back double. God is saying that pay her back double because of her, you know, why it is written in, even in the um, uh, Deuteronomy, in the, uh, it's written about restitution. You know, uh, when anybody uh, steals money, it was double, it has to be given double. Uh, they have to pay back double. So here it's saying that it means the wealth that city gained, it is all like a considered as a stealing. It means illegally gained that money, you know. So that's why God is saying that that city is will be paid in double. So the uh, wrath of God will come upon the city in double, like a destruction is going to hit 
to that city, you know. And then it's saying that in her in the cup which she has mixed mixed twice as much for her. Okay. And then so what sins the city committed? Three sins the city committed. Here it says, to the degree that she glorified herself and lived sensuously. It means self-glory, you know. So that is pride. Okay. And then um, to, to the same degree, give her torment and mourning. But she says in her heart, I sit as a queen and I'm not a widow and will never see mourning, you know. So that is a glory, the self-glory. And, and also it's a, it's a pride thinking that oh, I'm a queen. I will never, I'm never going to see mourning. It means avoid suffering you know that's why they don't work hard and gain money it is all they don't want to suffer they just want money you know it is it, this is like this you know when when satan tempted jesus it's like how you know uh, i will give you all the wealth i'll give you all these kingdoms to you you just worship me you know so that kind of illegal gain you know easy methods to get wealth is that fall into uh, devil uh, trap, you know, and selling themselves to the devil so that they'll become rich. It is like, a, what, what is this? Drugs, what is that drug, you know? And um, what about this uh, prostitution? What kind of business is that? Selling themselves, you know? So like that, many businesses are like that. They sell themselves to the devil to become rich okay so uh, it is uh, um, like a, because they avoid uh, suffering they don't want to go through hardships to gain money okay so they is saw that uh, also that the city thought that oh i'm not going to see any mourning you know no sorrow but this reason in one day her plagues will come okay so one day, within one day, that city is going to be destroyed. Suddenly, you know, um, pestilence and mourning and famine, and she will be burned up with fire for the Lord God who judges her is strong. So what all things are going to come? Pestilences, famine will come, plagues are going to come, and then burning with the smoke is uh, he saw smoke coming from the city what could be what could be it's burning the city was burning what could be it could be something like a nuclear weapons or something might have fallen on the city that's why the city started burning that's all we don't know maybe a war takes place in the war the city is targeted or uh, someone come up against the city, but somehow the city was burning, okay? And then that was actually a judgment of God. God only was judging, okay? And, then, and here, and the kings of the earth who committed acts of immorality and lived sensuously with her will weep and lament and over her when they see the smoke of her burning, you know, because of the all these kings become wealthy, all those people who did businesses have become rich uh, uh, because in that city made them so rich. And in one day, suddenly, if the city is burning and people start, they cry, it seems, when they see that, they start crying the lament over that city. What happened to this city, you know? So standing at a distance because of her, the fear of her torment, saying, whoa, whoa, the great city, Babylon, the strong city, for in one hour, your judgment has come. Okay, And the merchants of the earth weep and mourn over her because no one buys their cargoes anymore. What does it mean? It means no businesses anymore. Everything gone. Everything burned. Everything swept away. You know, it says here, 
cargoes of gold and silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every article of ivory, every article made from very costly wood and bronze, iron, marble, and cinnamon, and spice, and incense, perfume, frankincense, wine, olive oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle, sheep, cargoes, cargoes of horses, chariots, slaves, and human lives, everything just gone, burnt. So the fruit you long for has gone from you. And all things that were luxurious and splendid have passed away from you and men will no longer find them. Do you see that the condition that time, you know? And the merchants of these things who became rich from her will stand at a distance because of the fear of her torment, weeping and mourning and saying, Oh, woe oh, to the great city, she who was clothed in fine linen and purple scarlet, adorned with gold, precious stones and pearls, for in one hour such great wealth has been laid waste. And every shipmaster and every passenger, sailor, as many as make their living by the sea, stood at a distance and were crying out, as they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what city is like the great city? And they threw dust on their heads and were crying out, weeping and mourning, saying, oh, woe, oh, the great city in which all who had ships at sea become rich by her wealth, for in one hour she has been laid waste. Which city that could be? I don't know. Which city you think? You know, nowadays, which city is that rich? Which city has that kind of businesses nowadays? You know, and, and by the water in the city, I don't know, right now, for me, it looks like a Los Angeles. I don't know, because there's so much, you know, businesses there and so much... Uh, 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 illegally gained wealth, prostitution, you know, uh, all that drugs, so much going on, you know, in that we don't know, like maybe or otherwise Babylon also, nowadays Babylon is Iraq, right? It's also rich in oil there. If someone else comes and uh, make that city, raises that city up, and rich again, or if, if that city become richest than any other city in the world, we don't know if that become the Babylon or this uh, in, in America, this, you know, Hollywood, this, this become um, Babylon, we don't know <laughs> which one, but in that condition of that city will become like this, you know. So that's why, you know, do not, uh, we should not, uh, uh, focus on getting things, storing up treasures on this earth because nothing is going to stand. One day, everything will go away, wiped away, wiped away, you know. So here it's saying that, you know, um, uh, verse 20, rejoice over her, O heaven, and you saints and apostles and prophets because God has pronounced judgment for you against her. You know why? Did you see that? Actually, that that um, that uh, city also drunk with the blood of the saints, and God took revenge. God took vengeance on that city. You know, then um, a strong angel took up a stone like a millstone and threw it in the water, saying that you know this you know big stone taking in throwing in the water means that the stone just goes into the bottom, it will never come up again. So the city condition is that once it's ruined, destroyed, the city will never rise up again. The city will never, never come to that position again. Once gone, 
God destroyed fully. That's why when Jesus also said the same thing, millstone, if anyone is making you to um, sin, you know, if anyone tempt any of these little ones, you know, he's like a millstone should be thrown, you know, into the water. It's better for him to be thrown in the water like a millstone. It means that person will never come up again. You know, if anyone makes, see, we ourselves committing sin is wrong. If we make other people to commit wrong, is such a big thing. God is so against that, saying that, see, people, are, some people make others to do wrong, others to commit sin. Such people like a millstone throwing into the sea means they would never come up again in their life. You know, it's like that. So he's saying that here. And, uh, and the sound of harpists and musicians, flute players, trumpeters will not be heard in you any longer. It means no music, no entertainment, everything gone. Okay. So, um, and all the great men of the rich people, merchants, everybody just, and all those who were deceived by sorcery, you know, who were deceived by sorcery. Sorcery is also here, um, uh, anything illegally gaining. People go to uh, witchcraft powers and all these evil spirits. Why? To do wrong things. To do wrong things. To gain uh, wealth. Or to become rich or to destroy someone else. And they want to become rich by destroying someone else. Like, you know, they approach evil spirits. So that is we call witchcraft. You know, so sorcery is that kind of things. So that, uh, that city actually became rich because of the sorcery only. So, you know, <clears throat> yeah. So in her was found blood of prophets. See, that city, in that city, it was found the blood of prophets and uh, saints. It means that people, you know, those people were always come against the saints of God come against the true Christians. Okay. So then um, uh, chapter 19, let's move on to the chapter 19. So after these things, I heard a something like a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belong to our God. So there is great worship, praises, John was hearing, you know, at the same time, he was hearing these sounds from heaven, okay? So, the one side, what was happening on the earth, other side, he was hearing great noise and sound, worship in heaven. He was So, there's something, celebration was happening there, you know, they were all uh, saying hallelujah, you know, hallelujah, they were looking at the judgments, what God is doing, righteous judgment, you know, he's a, he, God is always righteous, whatever he does, very like it, it was, there was no weeping that time. The saints of God rejoice. No, actually, if you see, um, if you see God, how much longer he's waiting so patiently. He's given so much grace to this earth. So much of, he, he sacrificed himself. He given his blood and he, he, he given grace to people. He's so merciful and he's giving so much time for everybody. He's delaying his coming. He's giving chances after chances uh, for people to repent. <clears throat> And he's doing all that. And then one day it will come. All this will stop one day. The door will close. No more grace. Grace gone. Judgment comes. Beloved, <clears throat> so many people think, oh, God is so loving. God is so loving. God cannot do these things. God cannot do these things. But here the word is saying, God is going to do these things. God is going to judge people. God is going to destroy. You know what? Because God is so gracious. God given so much time for the earth to repent. 
That's why it says that before the door closes, we should come to God. Once there is a deadline for everything, there is a deadline. It's not going to be forever God is going to be gracious. Grace period. We are really blessed. We are in grace period. But do not think that this grace period is forever. This grace period is going to be ended one day. And the judgment is certain. It's definite. It's going to come. So, you know, so when he comes and he judges, and that's the time, all the saints of God and the prophets of God, and they're all going to rejoice in heaven and worshiping him, you know, and uh, hallelujah for the Lord our God, the almighty reigns, okay? And then let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to him for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. So these voices he was hearing from heaven. So it means uh, what happened in the heaven already, the church was raptured already, right? So that's why he, he was hearing those voices, you know, bride has come here. Let us, uh, you know, uh, let us, uh, let us have the uh, supper of the marriage supper here. You know, let us rejoice now. The bride, you know, um, beautifully uh, decorated her, herself and came and uh, be to be with the br meet uh, bridegroom. You know? So actually what a God, um, it is the whole thing. If you can see the whole thing, it all comes to end like this, you know, like in a Jewish culture right it's all about two things only betrothal and marriage that's all these two things in you know for them is the main things in jewish culture betrothal and marriage like how first it comes and um, uh, betroth like a, you know uh, engagement ceremony and he promises he promises the bridegroom promises the bride that i will come back and I'll make a room there and I will come back and take you. So in that meantime, that uh, after betrothal, in the meantime, this bride will prepare, get ready herself for, for the bridegroom to come and marry her and take her home again. Right? So that's what Jesus came first time. That is like a betrothal. Jesus came first time and he, he made a covenant with us. He made a promise that he will come back again to take us back again. Okay. So that was the covenant he made. That was like a betrothal. Okay. So now the time is given for us. This time is preparation for the bride to get ready. You know? So because the bride has to be in a good clothes, like a clean white linen clothes. White linen clothes is uh, representing a um, clean, holy holy life, righteous life, okay? So a bride always very, uh, wears white dress and a very um, uh, beautiful way, dress up, you know, and do all the makeup and all that. So that is the time God has given to the church right now for all of us to get ready. We should prepare ourselves to meet our Lord Jesus Christ. How can we prepare is that we have to get rid of this fleshly nature. We have to get rid of this human nature, Adamic nature, and we should dress ourselves with the righteousness of God. Those are linen clothes. And, you know, that clothes are, bride clothes are very clean, without blemish, without spot. So church should be ready with a, without blemish. We should become blameless. God should not put any blame on us. We should be like that, you know. And then he's coming. So that when he's coming, that in the midair, he comes there calling us. That's what rapture. So when we are ready, he comes in the midair to call us all. So we were all raptured. The church is going to rapture. The ready bride is going to rapture there to meet the bridegroom there. Okay. So he's going to take the bride to his 
there into his kingdom and there we have a place and we are going to live with him forever and forever okay so that's what has a saying here you know bride has has made herself ready it was given to her clothe herself in fine linen and bright and clean for the fine linen is the righteous acts of saints then he said to me right blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb and he said to me these are true words of god marriage supper you know and then there is another supper is coming another supper here it says in the in the in the in this later part it says there is another supper is coming that supper is the birds of the air they are going to have supper what they are going to come down because jesus is going to make a war with people who are against him and he is going to kill them all so that those birds of the air inviting them angel inviting them to eat have a supper eat the flesh of those people who wage war against son of god okay so here there are four suppers mentioned oh the time is up i can't go more <laughs> so okay there are four suppers mentioned actually you know uh, in the new testament it says uh, about salvation he given the parable about banquet wedding banquet that was for invitation for salvation and those who reject that banquet that supper they don't have part in the second supper what is the second supper lord supper lord supper is the second supper like a communion they those who reject their salvation they don't have part in the second supper third supper is this bride meeting bridegroom is a marriage supper when they don't have those two part two suppers they cannot even have this supper too okay that's why blessed are those who are invited for this supper if you are in this invitation you are such a blessed person you know and the fourth supper here is the birds of the air see okay he um, i'm going to read just quickly and finish it okay and i saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he who sat on it is called faithful and true and in righteousness he judges and wages war and then john the uh, apostle saw heaven open all this time he was hearing the noises voices in the heaven this whole thing was happening now heaven open heaven open now who comes down jesus is coming down on the white horse okay and then his eyes were flame of fire that is for war to do war to make a war against the people of this earth so that's why his eyes were flame of fire and also and his and his head many crowns many victories on his head okay and his name written on him no one knows except himself what and then his clothes dipped in the blood okay and his mouth a sword is coming from his mouth that is what word of god it means he doesn't need a weapon to to destroy people to kill people to war against people he doesn't need any weapon he just speaks a word that's what the sword from his mouth comes only he speaks a word people just be destroyed that's all you know and then he is uh, um and the armies which are in heaven followed him who are those armies follow we are all the whole church all the saints of god all the believers of jesus christ who were already there with him they all follow him to come down with him you know and not only that even angels also come okay so and then he rules he comes down and rules this earth with the rod of iron scepter you know it means he will set up his kingdom after he comes to the earth he will 
execute every person who rebelled him who rebelled his ruling every one will be executed okay every one will be destroyed every one will be killed okay and um and especially you know this war is called armageddon war armageddon battle armageddon battle is the people of this world you know earth waging war against the mighty one that's you know that is battle is armageddon battle you know when jesus comes first thing what he will do is that he will first throw these two beast the beast and the and the antichrist and the wrong prophet who who um uh, you know who supported antichrist the wrong prophet these two were first thrown alive into the lake of fire first he is going to judge that them both and then the rest of the people who followed the antichrist actually you know what what they do the act, before jesus comes everybody kill among themselves they start waging war among themselves and then and at one point everybody is so angry at god everybody will turn against god whole that's the time jesus had war with these people okay so then god laughs he is going to laugh at them because the bible in the it says in the new testament in the peter says the kings of this earth kings of this earth come against the holy one and he is sitting on the throne laughing at them you know it's really laughing god laughs at them because how can they win how can they go against god how can they win so that is such a deception that's how they were blinded so then and on his robe on his thigh its name was written what name king of kings lord of lords you know and then he saying a angel was saying that time you know crying with a loud voice saying birds fly in mid heaven come assemble for the great supper of god what was that he's asking angel asking all the birds to come down and eat the flesh of the people that is called supper of god it's a judgment you know ha ah, that's it and he says here you know what i said is written here beast was seized within the false prophet who performed the signs in his presence he deceived he was also seized and he and the mark mm, and were thrown alive into the lake of fire which burns with brimstone that's it praise god lord jesus lord we thank you for this time we thank you lord for this word lord let this word work in our lives and bring fruit lord what you lord um expected from all of our lives lord jesus lord deliver us from this materialism lord jesus no um i feel like you know um everybody let us let us say from our mouth jesus is my lord you know there is power when we confess that word jesus is my lord you know when we say that enemy will lose his claims on our life because we don't belong to the enemy we belong to jesus and our lord is jesus so when we say that enemy cannot come against us directly because he has to take permission of our lord jesus christ because we are not living on our own we are living in jesus okay let us all say that let us all say confess with our mouth that jesus is my lord hallelujah ra ba 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 lord every work of the enemy every claim of the enemy be destroyed in the mighty name of jesus 
loose every one of us. Loose them. Loose them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay.